Hi, Craig. Thank you very much for taking this time to talk to us. Could you tell us, please, a bit more about Merkel's business proposition, how it's developed and where it's currently positioned? Sure, Fiona. So uh, we have been on this journey for over 30 years now, um, and we've had kind of three strong ambitions. One was to be a market leader in any market that we decided to um, participate in. Two was to be a really well-run organization. And then three was to have a very strong culture um, and a culture really set on being a growth company. As we started the business, we really thought about the business as really a database marketing company. So we were building and managing first party databases for clients who were predominantly executing against direct mail opportunities or email opportunities. As we saw digital come, we knew that we needed to bolster our existing capabilities with that of a digital mindset. And so we started building out digital agency capabilities in terms of media capabilities and experience capabilities with the belief that if we took data analytics and technology and connected it to the digital world, um, that these platforms um, that we were hosting for clients in terms of their first party data would become enterprise data assets. Um, and that happened and the client became our CMO instead of the head of direct marketing. And today we take those, those, those same principles of how do we link data analytics and technology, but to the broader customer experience, what we'd call the total customer experience across sales, service, commerce, and marketing. And so that's why we positioned ourselves as a customer experience management company. So how does all this sit within the shifting privacy landscape? First of all, the privacy landscape is something that I'm very familiar with, having been in the data-driven industry for, for 30 years now, um, and have had to deal with things like the do not call list and, um, and obviously um, GLB and um, other, other privacy legislations along the way. I'd, I'd point to four things with respect to privacy. One is um, we'll all be on the same playing field, right? So as service providers, um, using data and as brands using data, we're all going to be in the same position having to adhere to whatever legislation is put in place. Um, the second is, is that when you combine the, the macro trends of, of legislation like GDPR or CCPA with other macro trends like the death of the third party cookie or the, or the privacy blocking, um, browser blocking, um, it will lead to um, a greater focus on first party data, obviously, and how you, how you gather that data um, and how you manage that data. And then also there's an interesting dynamic that's going on as you look generationally. If you look at research general, generationally, you've got um, baby boomers um, who were very sensitive about privacy, but as you get to millennials and you get to Generation Z, they've grown up in a digital world and they're used to the, um, they're really used to the trade and value exchange for the use of their information for a great experience or service. So I think that that's a positive trend actually for information-based marketers. And then as I think about our opportunity, I don't think that there's a better company in the world or organization in the world that is better set up to help companies or brands um, figure out how to ethically capture information on consumers, how to then integrate that data effectively, how to manage that data, how to create insights out of that data, and then how to activate those into truly um, you know, immersed and personal customer experiences across sales, service, commerce, and marketing. So who do you regard as your main competitors and, and how does what you do, is, is what you do differentiated from them? Well, the competitive landscape in terms of using data to drive customer experiences is uh, there's a pretty broad range of competitors. <clears throat> when I look historically, you know, our competitive set has been traditionally Axiom and Epsilon as the two major competitors. However, we're starting to see them less and less um, and starting to see a lot more of people like a PwC or a Deloitte Digital or an Accenture Interactive. And as, as we go down this journey of the broader customer experience, again, across those dimensions of sales, service, commerce, and marketing underpinned by technology, um, I'm quite certain that the competitive landscape will look more like the Accentures and the Deloittes of the world than it will look like the Axioms and Epsilons. So what are your ambitions for Dentsu's whole customer experience um, offering? 
Well, I think first of all, we are we are we are what we are what we would call a fast current, which was we are um, the aspect of of Dentsu that is growing the fastest. And as I look at the pivot to customer experience management, these pivots usually take ten years to fully um, you know execute against and see the the opportunity of in its totality. Uh, but I would continue to see our leading growth within the Dentsu portfolio, um, and I believe that as you look at at the at the landscape of competitors there's a lot of opportunity for us to take market share um, because our competitive set is so much larger. We kind of like being the, the small, more entrepreneurial, trying to go after the larger machine. Um, and I think that finally, uh, you know, geographic expansion is going to be important to us. Today, in overall debt, so we represent about 30% plus of the, of the revenues of the group. Uh, but within the in the breakout of Dentsu International business, we represent about 70% of our businesses here in the U.S., about 20% in Europe and about 10% in APAC. Um, and I think that we'll continue to invest in, in EMEA and APAC as well as the Americas, but we want to get our geographic expansion executed against. Thank you very much, Craig. That's given us an excellent picture. Thank you.